All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 401, Mysticism and Heathenism and Christianity. Link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links are to my books, blogs. A lot more is available there, too. 201 pages, so this is a full-length work. And first, let me uh, say something. Uh, I had a couple of works that were shared out and loaded on Amazon, but then a work got bounced because I forgot to put it in as public domain because it's an edited work and they've shifted how they do this now as opposed to being my own copyright, which, I mean, it is, but, you know, they, they do the legalese thing now. And then they actually retroactively removed one of the other works uh, be because of the same setting differential. So I also removed the other one just out of an abundance of caution. So now I have to, to go back through all of these. It won't take too long. They're already edited, but I just thought I'd point that out for the timeline's purpose. Anyway, this particular work is very good. Uh, and it's basically, it traces the concept of mysticism and, and arguably proto-mysticism up from the spiritist, spiritist sort of era. So, you know, you have like shamanism, etc. Um, in antiquity, uh, through high antiquity, of course, ancient Greece. It talks about the Persian mystics. It talks about Egypt, certainly. And traces it up through that into the biblical era, uh, with Judaism a bit, and then into Christendom. And uh, shows sort of the, the morphing over time of these mystic traditions, the basic premise of mysticism, and, and there are sort of different subforms of that. You, you can research that more for yourself from the mysticism header on the books blog if you want. Uh, I think there's several dozen works basically around the same topic. The basic premise of this work is evolutionary in form. So the idea is that, uh, th that the mysticism is being sort of purified over time as it's changed through then modern Christianity, and, and that that's the ultimate form, so to speak. The modern form is the best. All of these others are but shallow replicas of something that came later. You see this often within contemporary Christian accounts of mysticism and the occult. The concept is that things are purified in the age of Jesus, they're repurified with the Reformation, they're repurified according to some, with Mormonism, etc., in a more modern sense. Uh, the sooner, I mean, the, the more recent the system is, the more pure and wonderful it happens to be. While I don't like the evolutionary approach to the analysis of mysticism, it does a good job of tracing the change over time, and one thing that it fully admits, and some works don't do this, is that there are elements, lingering elements, of certain aspects of paganism within Christendom, within ritualism, within ceremony, within the manner of dress, more within Catholicism, really, than the Protestant religion, but that it's there, etc., etc., etc. Some of the meanings remain the same. Some of the symbols in modified form are there. The cross is a great example for, for a fact. Uh, the cross uh, is a pagan symbol. It was appropriated by Christendom, uh, which makes sense since crucifixion was a real thing that happened during the persecutions under the Roman Empire, and so it sort of became a symbol. The actual adopting of it, though, the adaptation, is more pagan than it was contemporary and Judeo-Christian. Uh, so again, <clears throat> very good work, uh, exhaustive, uh, quite a few secondary sources are mentioned. I really like the parts, it also talks about unconnected mystic systems too, by the way. Uh, it talks about Chinese mysticism. It talks about Indian mysticism. These don't really lead into what became Christendom. Uh, th there was contact. There was an interplay through the Persians, especially. Some people say that Jesus the Essene wandered around in, uh, in, in, as far as India, basically. We're not sure about this. Uh, the historical timeline is a bit vague. Um, it even talks about unconnected systems. And again, it talks about the, the purification of doctrine over time. One thing that I found funny, and Western commentators typically do this, is talking about Confucius and Lao Tse. And, and there was a bit of a grudge between them. And how Lao Tse's teachings were ultimately more mystic, better, uh, you could say. And it's sad. It was rendered as sad that China had gone more with Confucius and his teachings, leading to some of the problems they had in the 19th and into the 20th centuries. A Lao Tse influenced China, I think, would be a little bit more reluctant towards communism. I think that uh, Lao Tse should have been a little more charismatic, and maybe a uh, hundred million less people in the world would have died uh, at the hands of political persecution. Or maybe they would have developed an even worse system, we're not quite sure. Again, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links are to my books, blogs, plenty of other mystic uh, material available as well. That's about all. Peace out.